Hey YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers. So I'm going to make a video today uh, where I'm going to talk about in the sort of first year, sort of a rough guide to the order that I'm trying to work my training with my clients. And in this first year, it isn't always the way that you think it's going to be. There's a lot of restriction, there's doing very specific things and a lot of avoidance. And that's what I'm going to cover in this little video today. Just also to let you know, later this year, towards the end of June and the beginning of July, I'm going to be doing a new vlog series where I'm buying in a couple of new little pups and we're going to be tracking their progress through their training, which I think will be quite fun for people to watch. One of the things here that you've got to understand the difference between how I might train and how I might train my clients is that when you're obviously experienced, you're able to teach a lot more things at once and cover a lot more ground. And so therefore I'm able obviously to push a young dog on a lot quicker than one of my clients is going to be able to. When you're a novice, you're having to learn, make mistakes, recorrect, and then reteach. And that process therefore takes a lot longer than if you're just a trainer where you predominantly you're just teaching. That's not to say that you'll never stop learning. You're always learning new things with every dog that you do, but predominantly I'm able to push a dog along a lot quicker. So I, in some of my videos, uh, I might be doing a lot more than say one of my clients that I'm working with online. I have to break it down into sort of bite-sized portions so that they can do each part really, really well. The problem is as soon as you start doing too many things, you do none of it well, and then you might get so far and then things tend to fall apart. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys today is sort of an, a, a very overview of the order that I'm looking to do things. So when I, uh, when my clients start with the, I like to get people before they get their puppy. So before eight weeks, I often do their consultations and then we, we map out everything we're gonna wanna do, especially in that first five weeks. I mean, I say five weeks because in this first five weeks, that takes us to 13 weeks from eight weeks. And 13 weeks, I normally, 13 to 14 weeks, I normally start doing my lead training with my clients. So in that first block, we're learning to, uh, sorry, we're trying to create rhythm and a routine with the crate training. So getting the dog used to going outside, comfortable being on its own, not trying to manipulate us through noise. So there's lots of various bits that we have to do right there. So we end up with a quiet, calm dog. As I said, that's not trying to uh, manipulate us through noise, doesn't become sound uh, conscious, i.e. being triggered by lots of little sounds all the time and there's things that we do there. Um, we're looking to develop a retrieve. Now, retrieve is really important. I've talked about this in lots of videos. I'm not going to bore you with that. But you want to find something to do together rather than the dog finding things to do on its own. And also, it's important to be able to get the dog back to you with something it doesn't necessarily want to return to you with. I've talked about this a lot in the past. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too stuck on that. But that's really, really important. As I said, then at 13 to 14 weeks, and it can be a lot older. Traditionally, within kennels, I wouldn't put a lead on to a dog who's a lot, lot older than that. But most of my clients I'm working with obviously are a little bit keener and uh, most of those dogs have been brought up in the house. And so that makes those things a lot more important that we start earlier. So 13, 14 weeks, we start our lead training. If they do well, 20 plus weeks, we might start doing other bits and pieces. Hopefully at some point then we're gonna amalgamate our heel and our sit together with our retrieve. So once we've got the dog walking really, really nicely, then we teach sit. So a dog will always learn to sit a lot better when the dog is in the right position. So we work on the position of the heel work first, then the sit, then we do a bit of stay. We don't use the word stay, but for you all to understand, sit, um, what I call back off sit. So basically that's us walking slightly further away from the dog. We only have to do a couple of meters. Um, and then we teach something called recall sit, and that's teaching the dog how to approach us on a whistle command and sit. And that's useful for lots of things. Um, that helps with delivery on retrieving, and that's going to help further down the line once we've uh, done what's called control under freedom. So that's the next bit I then would be looking at. Control under freedom, that's being able to manipulate and control the dog whilst it's running around you. And we do that through a very specific type of long line work. Now, I often say to my clients that the change of direction work or control under freedom is a huge section. And that's not because it can't be taught quickly, it's just that that dog's natural development will continue for quite some time. So often people will say to me, hey, you know, we let our dog run round, it used to come back. And lots of puppies are very interactive at a young age, they will literally come back to anything, or certainly can do. But then they find themselves 18 months, that dog that they once had is suddenly no longer with them, and they're struggling to keep the dog in front of them. 
that's just a naive approach. So we do it in a certain way using a long line where we teach the dog to have a nice happy time running around us, but to then be under control within that. The very last thing would be then stop and then a recall. So I don't just let a dog run around and call it back. That long term is not a safe way to control the dog. We want to do that through what I call uh, control and freedom, change of direction. And then once we can stop the dog, then you're very easy going to call the dog back to you, especially when you've done the recall sit earlier. So hopefully that's a very broad spectrum view. I mean, I've just compacted, you know, two years of training down into a very, very small amount. Um, also to touch on, um, if your dog gets in the habit of chasing things, um, uh, that can be a very, very difficult thing to, to, to correct. But you have to do the things that run up to that first correctly first. So often people ask me questions, hey, hey, how do I fix this? And it's not as easy as just fixing that. It's normally things further down the chain that you have to correct first. Meanwhile, you need to avoid those incidents happening. And as I said, with the change of direction work or the control and freedom through the long line work and the way that we do it, gives you a safe way to control the dog. It means the dog can't develop that chase because you'll always be able to intercept that. Um, but with there being a long-term route to an end result. But you have to be patient on this. These dogs are not quick dogs to train. And I think that's one of the things that regularly catches people out. So anyway, as I said, hopefully that gives you a quick, broad spectrum view of the first sort of 18 months, two years. And this is the sort of thing that I'm trying to coach my online trying, uh, online clients through, um, where ideally I, if I pick people at, up at eight weeks, that's our ideal scenario, because then we can set out that map all the way through the training. Anyway, if that's something you're interested in, just go through to my Facebook page, Hampshire Spaniel Training. You can send me a message on there and I can send you a few more details. As I said, don't forget later on this season, um, into July, I'm going to be doing a lovely vlog series, uh, possibly a Cocker, a Springer, and maybe even a Labrador. Okay, I'm actually going to be creating a Labrador channel um, this summer. Um, I do have a background in Labradors, although I specifically at the moment specialize in Spaniels. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a subscribe and a follow. And I'll catch you later, guys.